it was far worse than we could have imagined. It was so absurd, it didn't seem like it was America, it was occurring in America. It was like something out of North Korea. I realized that basically I needed help. Fire responded to me, thankfully. Free speech is key to campus life. Hi, my name is Greg Lukianoff, and I'm the president of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, also known as FIRE. FIRE was founded in 1999 by Alan Charles Kors and Harvey Silverglade to defend basic rights on college campuses. These rights include due process, freedom of conscience, freedom of religion, and of course, freedom of speech. What you're about to see are five of the worst examples of abuses of student and faculty rights FIRE has seen throughout its history. And we start with a case in Indiana. I was found guilty of racial harassment just for reading this book. At Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, a student who was working his way through college as a janitor, Keith John Sanson never dreamed that he could get in trouble simply for publicly reading a book. I was ordered by my supervisor to report to the Affirmative Action Office. I think they saw somebody that was white and had a book on the Klan and they rushed to judgment. This is literally a case where a university judged a book by its cover. The book Notre Dame versus the Klan is an historical account how the Fighting Irish defeated the Ku Klux Klan. This book is definitely an anti-Klan book. Keith John Sampson was found guilty without a hearing of racial harassment. You cannot do this over a book. I mean, you can tell me you don't like the book, but you can't tell me I can't read it. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know who to turn to. I was just a tiny voice still squeaking over there in Indiana. Fire was my megaphone. It took the combined efforts of the ACLU, Fire, and the Wall Street Journal to get the university to back down. Whether it's a university or, or a local government limiting speech, they, they're violating the U.S. Constitution. This is America. Always stand up for your rights in America. The Delaware program was a program of coercion and intimidation, humiliation and indoctrination. The University of Delaware set up an invasive orientation program for all students living in the dormitories. My university ran an extensive and unconstitutional mandatory brainwashing program for students living on campus, all 7,000. They wanted to turn the students to stamp a mental footprint on the consciousness of the students. When students first arrived on campus, they would have interview sessions with their RAs. Would you date an African-American person? Would you date a Muslim? Would you be friends with a homosexual? The RAs asked very personal, very intimate questions like, when did you discover your sexual identity? When one female student said, it's none of your damn business to her male RA, she was written up. If you are homosexual, shouldn't it be your decision to let people know? The goal of this program was essentially a modern day public shaming. If you believed in gay rights, you had to stand on one side of the room. If you opposed gay rights, you had to stand on the other. You couldn't stay in the middle, and you couldn't explain your stand. They tried to get rid of racism and stuff, but they just made it worse than it was in the first place. It was a blatant violation of basic rights that students have. The right to privacy, the right to conscience. So I worked with FIRE, and we were able to get the university to suspend the program. Fire was wonderful and indispensable in solving the problem at Delaware. Hayden Barnes got in trouble with Valdosta State University for speaking his mind, and so the school went out of its way to expel him for absolutely nonsensical and pretextual reasons. Valdosta State University was planning to build a pair of parking garages for $40 million using mandatory student fees. I attempted to raise discussion about the necessity of a parking garage and possible alternatives by posting flyers detailing alternative uses for $40 million, uh, writing letters and emails to campus leaders. And that didn't sit well with the university president for whom it turned out this was a pet project. As soon as Hayden began to protest the building of this parking garage through putting flyers out on campus and then ultimately publishing a letter in the student newspaper, he had a target on his back. The president of the university looked for ways to get rid of him. He looked into his background. He told me I embarrassed him, um, that I, this could not be forgiven, um, and he was simply, he was clearly unnerved by the fact that I disagreed with him. And it was only later in having people investigate 
Hayden's activities online that they discovered this collage that Hayden had put sort of inadvertently on, on Facebook. It poked fun at the president's pride in a parking garage, which seemed like a funny thing to me to be proud about. And so they used that when uh, they had no other way to go about it to try and create a pretextual reason to remove Hayden from the university. But Hayden is a clear and present example of overreaching by government officials that have no ability to discern when they are violating the Constitution. Thanks to FIRE, I have one of the best First Amendment attorneys in the country defending my rights. FIRE is fulfilling an essential role in trying to combat these misguided trends on campus. I was threatened with suspension and expulsion from the university for putting up posters criticizing a professor about injustices that were going on through the community. Basically, as a social work student at the agency where I was interning at, a number of our clients were dealing with various social injustices. At the same time, the director of Binghamton Housing Authority was also a social work professor at the university. He was evicting these clients, so what I did was I ended up putting posters all over campus, uh, some on the internet and throughout the community. I got a letter and I was called in. They had informed me that I was going to be suspended. I guess I didn't know exactly where to turn. I don't have money. I, I couldn't afford a lawyer. FIRE responded to me, thankfully. FIRE wrote out a letter and sent it to the university. It became national news. They actually dropped every single charge, like, by the next day. Two of my students got uh, dragged into an investigation uh, from a, a new uh, a scheme in the education department at uh, Brooklyn College called Dispositions Theory. The national accrediting body, this group called NK, uh, had actually uh, promulgated new national standards uh, that required uh, education programs that listed social justice as a goal, as Brooklyn uh, did, to individually assess each student's capability uh, to promote social justice. Education schools were using this requirement from NK essentially to purge from the ranks of future uh, public school teachers anyone who they perceived as quote-unquote conservative or insufficiently tolerant. And so I wrote an op-ed uh, for Inside Higher Ed. After I had my op-ed published, I received a letter signed by every member of the education department at Brooklyn College telling me that because I had criticized their conduct in the dispositions cases, that I was going to be referred uh, to this body called the Integrity Committee. I realized that basically I needed help. FIRE sent a letter to the CUNY uh, Chancellor's Office and to the uh, Brooklyn College President. I received a phone call the next day from the uh, General Counsel's Office at, at CUNY informing me that I had no need to, uh, to worry that the Integrity Committee was not going to be conducting an investigation uh, any longer. Uh, and in fact, after um, this uh, all was ended, uh, the Integrity Committee ceased to exist. The top colleges in our country can place students and their parents in hundreds of thousands of dollars of debt. The very least students should be able to expect is the freedom to explore ideas without any fear of punishment. But if you go to thefire.org, you can see literally hundreds of abuses of basic student rights and campus speech codes that will surprise you. The more that people know about these abuses, the more easily we can put them to an end, and I ask for your help.